Good evening, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It's Saturday, September 6th, 2025. This is a brief update for the All Hazards Consortium Sensitive Information Sharing Environment on Hurricane Kiko in the Pacific uh, that is headed in the general direction of Hawaii. Uh, this is a uh, late evening a Saturday update, but I did want to give you some information uh, and share what the latest forecast shows uh, for any impacts on the island. Uh, this is the GOES satellite imagery, and I, I have this sector uh, set up here because I just want you to, sh to show you that there's nothing else as intense as Kiko anywhere in the Pacific in this view. You can see how small uh, the hurricane actually is. It is a Category 3 hurricane with 125 mile per hour winds, uh, and while there are no coastal watches or warnings in effect, uh, interests in the Hawaiian Islands should pay very, very close attention. Now, looking at this full screen uh, here, you can see that Kiko is a very small storm. Uh, as a matter of fact, hurricane force winds extend outward only up to 25 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 80 miles. And so if we can keep Kiko more than 80 miles off the coast of Hawaii, uh, we should be able to avoid tropical storm force winds, at least sustain tropical storm force winds. Uh, there could still be gusts to tropical storm, but we're, we're talking about Tuesday into Wednesday uh, next week. Uh, the one thing that the islands will notice ahead of time is the building swell. Uh, swells will increase as time goes on starting Sunday evening uh, and then on into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So you'll notice those swells coming up. Uh, I'm sure the surfers uh, will love it, uh, but it will produce more rip currents. Take a look at this sector. This is the mesoscale sector on the Goes West satellite from NOAA. Uh, and this is imagery every one minute. Look at that. It looks just like a buzzsaw out there in the Pacific Ocean. And indeed, it is. I'm going to take this full screen uh, so we can uh, show you the latest statistics from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center, which is a branch of NOAA. Uh, but it's headquartered in Honolulu. They handle all the advisories once a tropical storm or hurricane makes it into the Central Pacific Basin. So here we are, the latest information from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. Kiko is re-strengthening over the Central Pacific. Now, they did have an earlier advisory. This was a special one that was updated as of 1.50 p.m. Uh, Hawaii Standard Time. Uh, they had an 11 a.m. advisory uh, where the winds were at 120 miles per hour, uh, but Kiko has intensified since that time. So let's go over it here for you. It's located at 16.3 north, 141.8 west, or about 900 miles east-southeast of Hilo, Hawaii. Maximum sustained winds now 125 miles per hour. That places it solidly in a category three. Minimum central pressure, 951 millibars. And the movement is to the west-northwest at 12 miles per hour. Turning to GeoCollaborate, I wanna show you and go over a couple of things here that I have displayed. Because uh, there's a lot going on in this particular map, but I think it's gonna be very helpful. Uh, this first uh, graphic here is uh, the width of the tropical storm force winds. Inside of that are 50 knot winds, which is a narrow area, and then hurricane force winds. But once again, remember, hurricane force winds are only outward up to 25 miles from the center. What you see here are the various forecast times and strengths of the storm and the size of the wind field that is expected with the latest official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. And look what's going on here. Tropical storm force winds are not expected to reach the Hawaiian Islands as of the latest forecast. I can click on each one of these points here and show you the strength of uh, Kiko and what's expected over the next uh, several hours or over the next several days, that is. 
Um, so this is the forecast from advisory number 27. Uh, this is the 120 hour forecast. This particular point is the 48 hour forecast valid at 8 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time on September 8th. So that's Monday. September 8th is Monday. And it looks like the storm will be east of Hilo, Hawaii. But the tropical storm force winds will be well offshore. Now, don't let this get you confused as to its impact on waves and the swells that will be impacting all of the eastern Hawaiian islands and some of the southeastern facing islands as well. But this is what we can do. We can follow through with this forecast here. This is the forecast uh, radius for tropical storm force winds. Uh, and that is uh, during the uh, day on Monday. Uh, and again, this is the 72 hour forecast. This is the 60 hour forecast valid at 8 p.m. on Monday. And it looks like the center of the storm is forecast to be uh, just east of Maui and uh, winds of 75 miles per hour. So this is a minimal hurricane at this point in time. Many of you uh, have commented that hurricanes typically die when they come up uh, from this direction. And uh, this is not uh, going to be a dead hurricane, but it's certainly not going to be something like an Aniki. You remember that in 1992? That took a totally different path, came straight up from the south, and sea surface temperatures were quite warm. That was a very intense hurricane. Uh, this one, Kiko, is going to generate lots of waves. There could be tropical storm force wind gusts uh, on the islands. Uh, we'll be updating that as time goes on and the forecast gets more refined with how close it is expected to come to the islands. But you can see the wind field is expected to remain well offshore. Even when it's east of uh, Honolulu here, we're talking about a tropical storm and that tropical storm of winds of 65 miles per hour, it will be diminishing and you can see this advisory out here becoming a depression uh, well north and northwest of the islands. Uh, but we will have those waves kicking up and they will be quite large. Now this is the probability of tropical storm force winds impacting the Hawaiian islands here. You can see the big island here. Uh, this area is uh, out here less than 5%. Uh, but if we move in a little bit, this is a 5 to 10% chance uh, that the big island and also Maui and uh, Molokai and up to uh, uh, parts of Honolulu or Oahu and Honolulu have a 5 to 10% chance of experiencing tropical storm force winds. So the size of the storm could change as we go on in time, but the good news is, the great news is, we're not expecting any sort of direct hit from Hurricane Kiko on the Hawaiian Islands. Now let's talk about advisories, any advisories that are in effect right now. I'm going to zoom in on Hawaii here and I'm sure something's sticking out and that is what are these yellow lines? These are ocean gliders that have been deployed uh, by the University of Hawaii. It's part of uh, PAC IUS, the Pacific region of the Integrated Ocean Observing System. They have two ocean gliders out here that are sampling the ocean uh, right now for sea surface temperature, salinity, and all that stuff uh, so it can improve hurricane forecasting. So thank the folks at University of Hawaii for putting this out here. We can also see some buoys uh, that are out here as well. This particular one, uh, look at this. Uh, the significant wave height right now is 5.9 feet and the wave period is 11 seconds. The water temperature is 80.2 degrees, so plenty warm here. But as you get further away off to the east and the northeast, uh, the sea surface temperatures do go down pretty significantly. This is a National Data Buoy Center buoy from uh, NOAA. And there's another one over here. Uh, those water temperatures a little bit cooler, 79.9, 80 degrees, still warm enough to support a storm. 
but look how far that is away from the projected track. We also have other observations uh, from buoys throughout uh, the state of Hawaii. Now I want to zoom in a little bit on Hawaii. Uh, you can notice this green around the islands. Uh, that green uh, is there because there is a, a special coastal flood statement that's been issued by the National Weather Service in Honolulu uh, this morning. Uh, and that is that minor coastal flooding during high tide through Sunday afternoon for low-lying coastal areas of all the islands. Not because of hurricane. This is because it's associated with the lunar cycle that will lead to minor coastal flooding along the shorelines and low-lying coastal areas. Again, during the day, afternoon today, and high tides through Sunday. So we could experience isolated minor coastal flooding, portions of uh, Kahulwe, uh, Kauai, Lanai, Maui, Molokai, Nihau, Oahu, and the Big Island. So be careful for low-lying areas because during times of high tide, there could be coastal flooding. What are the impacts? Well, we could have some flooding of beaches that are normally dry, minor coastal erosion, and some salt water inundation. Now here's the other product I talked about yesterday or the day before. This is total precipitable water. And I wanna show you this because you can see obviously uh, where Hurricane Kiko is. And uh, certainly that's uh, this area right here that's spinning in the Pacific. And look at all the moisture with it. There's a lot of dry air over Hawaii today and the Hawaiian Island chain. There's dry air ahead of Kiko. But look how it's traveling in its sort of bubble of moisture uh, as it breaks out and starts to move towards the west northwest. So uh, if the storm remains off the coast about this far, you can see that the moisture field will extend a little bit further. So uh, we will have impacts from Kiko, not only from waves, uh, but we could have it uh, from heavy rain showers that develop uh, as the wind hits the mountains. Uh, we could see some heavy downpours. That'll get more refined as we get closer. Now here's one thing I want to show you really quickly. This is from the Atlantic Oceanographic Marine Lab. Uh, this is called the, uh, the HAVES model. And I just want to show you these animations that are right next to each other here. Uh, the one on the left is sea surface temperature. And the one on the right is ocean heat content. So wherever basically you see purple, the storm, Hurricane Kiko, is not getting much energy from the ocean. You can see down to the south and the west there, uh, where um, which is right here. This is ocean heat content uh, that the storm can generate or, or derive heat from to maintain it. But once it gets over this purple, it's very difficult and it actually hinders the storm. So watch as I take this forward and you'll see the storm, where it is headed and what happens with the ocean heat content. So there it's over purple, and this is during the day uh, tomorrow into Monday. You can see that it's not really getting much energy. And the sea surface temperature on the left, you can see that sort of yellowish, where it's right below, it's about 78, 77 degrees. So the storm will not be getting any energy from the ocean. And with an increased shear that's going to start blowing into the storm, we should see some weakening. And by the time Hawaii becomes into the picture here, there's Hawaii right there on the left-hand side, the whole island chain. You can see that it really has not had much ocean, any ocean heat content at all to pass through. And the sea surface temperatures have been relatively cool for a tropical system to maintain itself. You can see it gets a little bit warmer up here to the north but the storm will already be close to a tropical storm by this time. So I just wanna show you, this is how the ocean plays a role in fueling or working against a tropical system strengthening. So what you see here is the GFS model, the Global Forecast System model from the National Weather Service. And the output that I'm showing is the wave heights. 
So right now, let's see on the island, I have this push pin uh, right in here, right off the coast of Hilo on the big island. Waves are about four feet from the southeast. That's about the height. Could see some five footers, generally about four feet. Now I'm gonna take this animation that starts tonight around midnight Eastern time uh, and take it on into Sunday. And you'll see as we start to, the influence from Kiko starts to come into play Sunday morning to Sunday afternoon, Hawaii time. And you can see the waves build up slightly. So we're at six feet and seven feet. This is by Monday afternoon. So Monday morning, Hawaii time. We should start to see waves hitting the coastline here uh, about seven feet in Hilo. And I'm going to continue this on so into Tuesday because this is where we're going to have the biggest impact on the Hawaiian Islands. And this, we're talking eight-foot waves here off of Hilo on the Big Island. And I can take this pin and just drag it a little bit up the coast. Okay, so here we are uh, right at the tip of Maui. So this is about uh, Hana in uh, Maui waves of eight feet and we're talking about tuesday morning in hawaii tuesday afternoon uh, eastern time uh, and then the waves will progress up the island chain uh, so we'll see them in uh, molokai we'll see them move up into oahu and even up into uh, Kauai. here is Kauai right here as time goes on but the storm will be starting to diminish in intensity, but that doesn't mean that the wave actions diminish either. So here's some timing right now. This is Wednesday morning, so late Tuesday night uh, in Hawaii. So we'll move over here to Oahu. And on the northern tip of Oahu, we're talking about seven foot waves. And uh, over here uh, in Kauai, uh, seven foot waves likely and these are ones that will be impacting the shoreline just off the coast they'll be seven to ten uh, perhaps even larger if we go out closer to the storm uh, we are seeing a uh, wave heights of 11 feet out here and this is forecast 12 13 14 15 16 17 so upwards of 20 foot waves uh, will be generated from the center of the storm but they will dampen out, but still we'll get some pretty big swells. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see anywhere from seven to 10 foot swells in some of the islands here. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Thanks so much for watching this update. Uh, please stay safe, watch out for yourself, and also watch out for your neighbors. They really do appreciate it. Have yourself a good night. See you tomorrow.